Howdy everyone, my name is Josh Blaylock and this is the Skype for Business Recap. We are uh, doing our second show of the year and uh, for those of you that uh, may have watched the show before, um, you may have noticed that uh, my, my intro music changed a little bit there and uh, long story short, uh, the last few times where I've, I've played my show or went to edit it or did some tweaking before publishing or whatever, and I've been in the same room with my wife and she actually heard the intro music, there would always be this smile or this smirk that came over her face and I could tell, I could tell that she was just, you know, thinking something that is something humorous or kind of making fun of me, if you will, a little bit about something. And so I was just like, all right, out with it. Is it, is it just that the show is really nerdy? Does that just make you smile or, or what is it? And so finally she fessed up that my intro music uh, just always caught her funny bone and she thought it was was kind of silly. So I was like, all right, I kind of get it. I thought it was a peppy intro and, and would get, you know, get attention and, and kind of just be part of the brand or the show. Um, but I, the more I listened to it after she said that, the more I started to be like, okay, maybe it is a little silly. So uh, I changed it up to, to the one you just heard. It, uh, it's nothing custom or special. I grabbed these free sound bites from the uh, audio library in the uh, Creator Studio on my YouTube channel. So nothing special there, but this was another clip that I thought sounded uh, not too long, uh, but hopefully not, not quite as nerdy as the, <laughs> the last one. So at any rate, feel free to share your thoughts. If you uh, like the new, the new intro music, let me know. If uh, you think it's uh, lame or you like the old one better, let me know that too. And uh, yeah, so small piece of the show, but every little bit helps make it just a little bit more acceptable to some other user maybe or some other viewer. So at any rate, um, it has been a busier week. This was the first full week into the new year after holidays and all that people are done for the most part with their their long extended pto sessions they needed to burn vacation time at the end of the year so they were pretty much out the last few weeks and, and going into the new year through like pretty much january 4th for half the people i knew uh so everyone is kind of back at their desks back to working uh twitter and linkedin uh especially twitter really reflected that you saw a lot of content out there a lot of people getting back involved with sharing stuff, putting a new blog post out there, trying to kick off the new year right and busy. So, uh, which is good. We're all back to work. We're all doing cool, new, exciting things. Um, but it means there's a lot to keep up with now and a lot more to kind of uh, filter through. I don't have any earth shattering items as far as the product goes to really dive into today, but there is quite a bit of stuff that I wanted to touch on and, and, and call out. Uh, so, uh, without yammering on too much more about that stuff, we will we will get right into it here. Um, the first thing was there was a new January cumulative update released for Link Server 2013. Uh, a couple different KB numbers here. Uh, the Web Components KB article is 3126638. Uh, and uh, then the Core Components KB article is 3126637. Um, and pretty much the only new issue that I saw really called out in these articles, uh, you know, on Microsoft's site, uh, was an issue uh, that prevented you from joining a meeting from outside Link 2013 for iPhone or Link 2013 for iPad on iOS 9.2. So if this is you, if this sounds familiar to you, or you run, you know, manage an organization where a good amount of your customer base might be impacted or affected by this particular issue, uh, then this is a cumulative update you'll want to go check out, maybe start prepping for. Uh, again, it's not, not anything crazy. There's no new amazing features being added here or anything like that, but um, it, is, uh, it, it, is, it will help patch up an issue uh, that may be bubbling up for those iOS users on 9.2. Uh, so I will put the link to it in the uh, description of the video, uh, if I remember to after the video. <laughs> so um, yeah, 
That's that's the first piece. The second piece was the Skype show. Um, if you again, if you've watched the show in the past, you've heard me talk about the Skype show a few different times. Mark Vale uh, at Unified Vale on Twitter announced that this show would be launching a few months back in 2015, and uh, kind of let us know, hey, the show is going to be an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes. Uh, broken up into a few different sessions. There will be guest speakers. It will be community driven. They will be getting ideas and suggestions from us, the community members, about what we'd like to hear talked about, uh, what we'd like to hear uh, brought up on the show, and and and, and dove, you know dived into there. And then at the end of each show was going to be a uh, a Q and A session where we have a chance to kind of pick the brains of the people who spoke and and hear. Uh, hear what we want, you know, and get our questions answered about the content that was talked about. So the first show was an absolute success. It was uh, an awesome, awesome show. I really wish that I could have watched it live, but alas, it was during normal work hours for us here in the U.S. and um, and and something came up as things will and that uh, at work, so I could not I could not attend to the show and, and watch it live. However, it was a Skype meeting broadcast link, so I was able to go right back to that link and watch the playback. Um, and they have since got it uploaded to YouTube and everything there, so we're it's it's out there for people to access via uh, via YouTube. Um, and if you go to their website, which is www.theskypeshow.com, you can go to their episodes section, click on episode one, and watch that uh, that version in YouTube. So that uh I, I watched that after the fact very good show very well done uh great job by both mark and corey thanks for for bring putting this out there we talked about user adoption we talked about uh we they talked about user adoption and uh cloud pbx some of the newer features that hit with uh in skype for business online with uh the e5 license and everything their first guest was Anthony Carrigal, and he did an excellent job talking about media traversal on, on the Edge servers. Um, and so it was, it was good to see him take a part in the show, and, uh, and he, he just had some really good content there for us. So, um, and then, of course, the Q&A uh, session at the end as well gave members a chance that were participating live to get in there and ask some questions. And, uh, and so that was, that was really cool. I was glad to see that community involvement happening live during the show. And I imagine that will only increase uh, with subsequent shows. Um, so, yes, Cisco and Ebert, two thumbs up. Very good job, guys. Um, if that's, like, trademarked or I'm not allowed to do that, please don't tell anyone. I just said, I, you know, anyway, two thumbs up. It was very good. Um, I uh, look forward to this episode two. They have announced that Matthew Landis, a uh, pretty well-known name in the community here, he, uh, he will be the guest for the second show. Uh, which is going to be on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. Um, he is a Office Services, Office Servers and Services MVP, and um, they're hoping to get him to talk about his upcoming release of Cepha Util. So uh, hopefully they can get him to talk about that. That's been something he's mentioned a few times on Twitter and been working on here. And, um, and uh, whether that is or is not the topic he ends up settling on, it should be a good talk from him, and I'm sure they'll bring some more great content as well. Um, they're they're all outstanding, very awesome members of the uh, of the community. So, great show. I think this is great for us all to have. I love that it's community driven. For the rest of you that are interested in the show or interested in having some concept or idea or product area talked about in detail or more specifically in the future, so that you can kind of dive in and, and talk with some of the experts on it. Let them know. Go to the www.theskypeshow.com. Submit your ideas. Let Mark know via Twitter, uh, and they they would be happy to include these topics in upcoming shows. Um, again, great job, guys. This was the first episode was on Monday, the fourth. Um, they they kicked things off very well. Great inaugural show. I'm sure there are many more good things to come here. So. Next, um, there is going to be, this, this morning, I saw uh, Tom Arbuthnot, um, another Office Servers and Services MVP who works for Modality Systems. Uh, he's based out of the UK, I believe, and uh, I always see stuff he's participating in going on in the UK anyway. And, uh, and I know Modality Systems has a big presence there. He um, brought up that he will be speaking at the UC Expo 
which is going to be taking place in London on April 21st and 22nd. He is going to be delivering a talk entitled Replacing Your PBX with Skype for Business in the Real World. Uh, he's going to be giving his talk on the 21st of April from 12 to 12.30. So if you plan on being at the UC Expo, or if you don't plan on it, but you're in the area, maybe you should plan on it. Um, if you're going to be traveling from out of country to come, come to the Expo, good for you. Make sure you stop by and listen to his talk. Uh, he, he's, a, he's an excellent and, and very knowledgeable member of the community. Um, he, I've, I've seen him be involved in several different conferences and expos where he's delivering talks and, and staying, uh, staying at the forefront of what's going on with the product. So I'm sure this will be a really good talk to be sitting in on. A um, few months away to plan that out, so if it interests you, start planning now. Um, the next thing was a few notes on the Skype for Business 2016 client. These are not things that I myself discovered or verified, but just a couple things that uh, a prominent community member, Ken Lasko, called out on Twitter, uh, who is another Office Servers and Services MVP. Um, he pointed out uh, some new desktop sharing behavior that he observed. So those couple things were that, well, first, you now get notified when everybody is able to see your screen when you start desktop sharing. That's helpful. Good to know when that's actually occurring rather than kind of guessing if it's happening yet. Um, and then two, incoming desktop sharing, meaning you're not the one sharing your desktop, someone is sharing their desktop with you. Incoming desktop sharing does not ask you to accept anymore. It just starts presenting. I like this. I always thought that was a little bit unnecessary, you know, when someone is sharing their desktop with you and yet you have to accept that. I, I'm, I was like, the presenter should be prompted to make sure they do want to share their desktop, but the receiver should just be able to have that start coming in. I felt like having to accept that was just one too many steps in the process. Sounds like they fixed that, taken that out, and uh, made that whole presenting process a little more smooth. So, very cool stuff there. Uh, very good, uh, good notes on new behavior in the 2016 client. Um, and that's it. Those are the four items that I had. Like I said, there's there's a lot going on out there. There's much more than this that, that, that could have been talked about, but I do try to keep these to 15 minutes or less, so we'll try to cap it here. Um, <clears throat> one other last thing I wanted to say is that it looks like uh, right after I did my last show last week on the 1st, um, that, that was apparently the announcement of renewals and new uh, MVP awardees. So to all the various people that I saw on Twitter in the uh, office servers and services uh, category who were renewed, uh, congratulations to you all. That's phenomenal. That's a, even if you're renewed for the 10th time, that's still a phenomenal achievement and an awesome thing to continue to be recognized as a leader in the community. And, and thank you for all your efforts that have allowed you to be renewed. We, we appreciate that greatly. Uh, well deserved for you guys. I, I did not notice any new ones added. Uh, if there were pe new new MVPs added in the office servers and services link Skype for Business specific area, um, and I missed that, then I, I apologize and congratulations to you if you're out there. I just did not notice any new ones pop up in, in the chatter that I was seeing. Uh, but there were a good handful of people that I'm regularly seeing and, and tweeting back and forth with who were, were renewed, and again, hats off to you. Uh, much congratulations there. Uh, very cool new way to start out the new year. So, at any rate, again, happy new year, everyone. We'll be back next week um, with uh, with hopefully more new awesome content. Thanks for tuning in this week. I hope the show was helpful, and uh, hope you guys have a great and restful weekend coming up. Thanks. We'll see you next time.